that is the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. Within that group, we have a group called the Home Defenders League, which I am the secretary of. The Home Defender League is an organization of California homeowners who are in foreclosure, have been foreclosed on, or they are facing foreclosure. And what we're doing, the reason why we formed this group is that we're trying to revamp the foreclosure process with the banks. Um, and that's up to and including principal reduction as a first line in, in the modification process. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit my, about my story and how I became an ACE. I'm a homeowner and I've been in my home for over 20 years and when the economy was really great, just like a lot of people, my husband and I took money out of the equity to start a business. Well, when the economy turned around, that business fell and we were still left with a high monthly payment. When we saw that we weren't going to be able to make this payment every month, we called our bank, which was Andy Mac and they're now One West Bank. And we advised them that, look, my husband, he's an animal trainer for the movie industry. They went on strike. He lost a lot of hours. I was a licensed child care provider. Many of my parents lost their jobs, so I lost income. So we were trying to do the responsible and right thing by calling the bank and letting them know that we were going to have a problem making our monthly payments. The bank told us, are you behind? No, we're not behind yet. Well, don't call us. Don't call us before two or three months. We can't help you right now. So we continued to make our payments. It was a struggle. Then it came to the point where we couldn't make it. So it, we, we did get to that two to three months. And we called them. So that's when the terror started. <laughs> We had to constantly resend, resend, resend the same paperwork. We talked to different people every time. A lot of the people were rude and didn't want to work with you. And they said really mean things to you when you called them. Finally, they did make us an offer. First, before they made the offer, we were in a trial modification, which is supposed to last three months. However, our modification trial period lasted 10 months. At that point, they offered us a loan modification, which was, I think, like $75 less than our um, note that we were paying. So my husband said, no, I'm not going to sign this. So they called him and asked him, well, you didn't sign the paperwork. Why didn't you? And he explained to them, well, my wife lost her job. We went on you know, the whole spiel. OK, what we'll do is we'll resubmit your paperwork without your wife's information. Long story short, within the, pro within the process of them doing the modification, they were doing the foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's called dual tracking. Right. And normally, when they do that, the foreclosure goes through before the loan modification goes through. So in October, my husband was out of town working. I had no idea. He had no idea. I went to the store. I came back, and there was a letter of default on the door. So I panicked. What is this? What is this? And I was there by myself and I had to handle this because he was in Louisiana and he couldn't really handle it. And I have to tell you, as an American, as a human being, it was one of the most debilitating times of my life. You don't understand the fear, the anger, and the worthlessness because we were in our home for over 20 years. And we felt ashamed because we were going through this, that we had did something wrong. One day while sitting and having a pity party, I was listening to NPR. I'm a public radio girl. And um, they were talking about a group called the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. And they were talking about how they were out there helping families save their homes. I called. I went down and I spoke to one of the representatives that worked there, one of the community organizers. And because he reached out to me in love and determination and told me, I can't save your home, but I can give you the tools to help you save your home. 
And from that day in, in October, I joined ACE. I became fired up, I'm passionate, I'm not playing, and I take it to the banks. <laughs> That we've been successful in. A lot of times when people apply for um, or want to get a, a loan modification, you, you have to understand that that homeowner is in panic. They, they need somebody who is supposed to be a professional to assist them in the process. So they go through these different agencies and tell you, oh yeah, I can help you get your loan modification. Just give me $3,500. Just give me $4,000. And people did that and never heard from them again. Well, you know what? We got fed up with that. So we take it to them. So far, we've done about what we call scam actions. We've done about eight. And out of the eight, there is only one homeowner who we haven't gotten their money back. We go straight to that agency with the media and we demand that person's money back. And trust me, when the media is there, they're going to give you your money back. <laughs> and a lot of them are in big high-rise buildings and they don't want their neighbors to know that they're crooks. <laughs> so they're going to give you your money back. <laughs> so we've been successful in that right. We also go to the banks. In December of last year, downtown Chase Branch, we decided because Chase was giving a lot of our members a, a problem, we decided that we were going to take furniture to the bank. We set up a living room, a bedroom, a dining room. <laughs> and we told Chase, since you won't let us live in our homes, we're going to move into your home. <laughs> and that's what we did. But we got to call the police. <laughs> but what they didn't know is that we are a non-violent organization. We had arranged with the police officers, Los Angeles Police Department, prior to that, that we were going to do this action. And some of us were not going to move, that we were going to go to jail. So they understood that. But it, even though I knew I was going to jail, it was still kind of frightening when you see a hundred riot police in their riot gear. You know, but I have to say to you, LA, LAPD treated us with the utmost respect when they arrested us. They didn't, they didn't put on the handcuffs very tight. They escorted us. They didn't drag us. And when the media wasn't around and couldn't hear them, they said, good work. Keep up the work. <laughs> A lot of police officers are losing their homes. A lot of firefighters are losing their homes. A lot of teachers are losing their homes. And they're being, it's been said that they are the cause of the financial crisis. And I'm with Mary, how dare you? We know that Wall Street, Wall Street bankers, and Republicans with their deregulation mentality is the cause of the financial crisis. You will not put that on teachers. You will not put that on our public workers such as police and firefighters. We're not going to have it. We're standing with Wisconsin. Each and every one of you in here stand with Wisconsin. We got to take it to the streets. We got to go each of the The media has bought into it. I say to you today, in the words of someone who I truly admire, we've been had, <laughs> we've been led astray, run amok. We didn't fall on this financial crisis. The financial crisis <laughs> fell on us. So we're going to fight. And we're going to fight starting here, starting today. Stop talking.